Hey guys, so what we have here is an 18 speed Eaton Fuller and we're gonna swap it with this 18 speed Eaton Fuller. Um, just did a clutch on this one for this truck right here. The customer took it out, was driving it around and he was getting a lot of grinding uh, when he was trying to split his range up into high. So I took the, the auxiliary out of the back of this one and I checked and what I found was that his synchronizer there's a rubber coating on the inside of this synchronizer it's kind of like a rubbery but that helps you shift and as you can see It's worn down. His synchro gears you have some wear on them as you can see there. So told him I could rebuild it for him. We had this one laying around and he said he wanted to buy it anyway. It'd probably be, you know. So he just wants this. This transmission only has 30,000 miles on it. So what he's gonna have us do is throw this one in the truck and then we're gonna rebuild this one. So what I'm just gonna show you guys today is how to how to install this if you if you've never done it before. So um, I didn't plan on making the video until after I already took the transmission out of the truck. But when you're going to install these, just check everything. You now check this one. His uh, forks here, his little keyway isn't all the way in the long shaft. So I got to get that set in there. Um, you know, just check for check the input shaft for any kind of wear or nicks or marks. Um, check the play in the long and short shaft. Make sure those bushings are good so you don't. This one's a little little loose, but it's not horrible. Um, clutch brake, obviously, that thing's gonna need to get replaced. And then he has his end caps on his auxiliary. He is missing the shims out of them and the gaskets, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the shims and the gaskets in there and those hold the counter shafts in place. And after I do that, well, I'll show you how to guys how to put it back up in the truck. Um, when you're doing this kind of stuff, so what I've had to do is swap out a bunch of the airlines. Um, when you're swapping airlines on these things from the valves, make sure you mark. What I just do is I take a paint pen and I usually mark the ends of them so I know where they go when I'm swapping them over and just pay close attention because if you get those airlines wrong, you're not gonna be able to shift properly and you're gonna get a bunch of grind and a bunch of weird shit going on. So just pay attention when you're doing that kind of stuff and it'll go a lot smoother. All right, so I've got these end caps taken off, and as you can see, this is the back of your counter shaft in your auxiliary section. <clears throat> it's got two racer, or a racer that goes around, and then the bearing, same on the upper half. So the easiest way I've found to get these, uh, you gotta get the shims, one shim on each side with the gasket. So, now what you do, make sure you get all the old gasket off of there. You see there's some peeling off of there right now. Um, I would not recommend taking a wire wheel or any sort of spinning device that's gonna cause dirt or any other 
contaminant to get inside of this bearing. So what I do is I use a just a razor scraper and it's just like a square edge. It works pretty well. Just get as much off as I can, clean it off with a rag. And then after I do that, I will um, come back and show you the best and easiest way to install these. Yeah. Uh, these ones you can take a wire wheel till it doesn't matter. Just uh, make sure you get as much debris off as possible. Any kind of metal shavings or dirt or whatever it may be. So the best way I have found, I've done a couple of these to uh, get these to set in there because it's kind of a pain in the ass to get these, these uh, shims to sit tight up against here and put that cap on without the shim sliding out of place and creating a gap. So easiest way is just to take a punch and just something small like this and put it around the edge of this spacer and just lightly tap it in as far as it'll go and it'll create a little space around here for that spacer to sit and it usually will just sit there. If you're having trouble with it sitting there, you can take some uh, assembly grease, put it around the spacer, set it in there, it should stick. <clears throat> then you'll put the gasket, put the gasket on after that, whichever way it fits. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory, but when you are tightening down the bolts to these caps, you need to be careful not to over torque the caps. They will crack. If you crack the caps, you have to replace them. And if you don't replace them, you're gonna run that transmission out of fluid and you're gonna burn up a transmission. So these are kinda just, you know, it's, it's not hard, but you just have to be careful, pay attention to what you're doing. The torque spec, I. I'm not 100% sure, I'm thinking I'm about 85% sure. It's uh, 40 to 45 foot pounds all the way around and that's on the Eaton, Eaton side. So 40 to 45 foot pounds on all four bolts on both caps and you should be at the right, right torque spec. So I just tapped it around and you see how that just sits in there like that? So if you just tap that racer in, I'm telling you it's gonna save you a lot of fucking headache. So it's just that easy, then put the cap on and torque it down. About ready to get this transmission, uh, get it under the truck and get it put in. The last thing we're doing here is just putting the clutch on the, on the input shaft on the tranny. Um, when you're doing this, you gotta make sure, so you got your clutch brake back here. You gotta just set that forward and push it up against your, your throw out bearing. Okay, and your shift forks. So your throw out bearing is on the back of your clutch. And there's only one way you can put this on here. The easiest way, so you just kind of get this as far down as you can. Um, get that, you gotta get that clutch brake up against that bearing. Otherwise, this won't go down far enough to get it, the forks over. So these forks, so when you're doing this, you gotta make sure Usually what they do, they have like a block when you get these clutches new in between the carrier bearing and, or the throw out bearing and the clutch. Um, it creates a space in here and, it, and then um, you don't really have much room for error, but uh, this, is, this clutch is brand new and it's off that old tranny. So I'm throwing it in here, it doesn't have that little, usually it's a block of wood or piece of plastic. So this right here has to go over and sit up against this part of your, uh, this plate on your throw out bearing. So you just kind of push the clutch back a little bit and then grab your handle and pull it up at the same time. And that's it. Okay. You gotta be careful if it doesn't have that space in there because what it can end up doing is going through the back of the clutch and then you'll try to close that and it won't close because you're just grabbing onto the clutch. So it'll sit around that throw out bearing and that's what's going to um, get that clutch to work. This is this is just going to connect to your shift linkage and your clutch in the truck. The clutch pedal in the truck. Um, last thing to do is the pressure plate. This one for some reason isn't labeled. I don't know why. I 
but yeah, this is your pressure plate. Um, usually it tells you which side, which way the pressure plate's supposed to face, but on this one, I already know since I took it off, this side's gonna face your flywheel. So you just stick that up there. Sit up in there like that, and that's it. Uh, once that's done, it's ready to go up in the in the truck.